Analyzing fragments of DNA on exploded bomb materials may not be easy. It's smoky in here, so. But it could help law enforcement officials identify the culprits behind future bombing attacks. What we're looking at is do people leave behind enough cellular material or enough DNA when they assemble that bomb and screw it together and, and fiddle with all the parts that we can go back and once a device is detonated, can we go back and say who assembled that bomb? To see if that's possible, Foran and his team purchase everything needed to build a pipe bomb minus the gunpowder. They then have a volunteer mark those components with their DNA. So they'd put them together and or the components together. If it's a, in a backpack, they'd wear the backpack for a few days and just handle like they normally would. The materials are taken to a testing facility used by the Lansing Fire Department where the Michigan State Bomb Squad adds the gunpowder places the bombs in a secure room, and the search for DNA begins. You're working with basically a mess, okay? Something just blew up. Pieces are everywhere, smoke, soot, crap, and there's not much DNA on it. And so as you're handling it and as you're working with it, we have to be extremely careful about, again, not contaminating it and making sure that what we get from the bomb is actually from the assembler of the bomb and not from someone else. Back in the lab, the fragments are swabbed for what's left of the DNA. Try to cover it everywhere. Which is then tested. The tubes containing the DNA would be placed into a machine such as this. That machine replicates the DNA so there's enough to be analyzed. Once that's done, we can actually do the analysis uh, and look at that person's profile. By measuring small variations in the sections of DNA shared by all people, Foran's team can produce a graph showing what makes a person's DNA unique. This profile is from actually one of the uh, backpacks that we destroyed. All the different regions of DNA match up exactly. We can then ask, what are the chances that this didn't come from that individual, but that it came from somewhere else? And the statistics on that, because we have so much genetic information, tend to be one in the trillions. Uh, because there aren't a trillion people on Earth or anything close to it, we can be very, very, very assured that this individual handled this piece of evidence. Being able to make that connection is key. Uh, IEDs, again, are the uh, uh, weapon of choice for terrorism and certainly are increasing, increasingly being used in the United States for criminal activities. And this is going to have profound impacts on our ability to actually solve those type of crimes. Foran's research is already influencing how the Michigan State Police collect and process IED-related evidence, and it's drawing interest from as far away as Australia. He's now testing remote triggering devices that allow IEDs to be detonated from great distances. For Discovery News, I'm James Williams.